What's going on YouTube? It's Wayne with Wayne's Fish World. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to cure cyanobacteria in your saltwater reef tanks with ChemiClean and then following up with ChemiPure Elite. Now, a lot of people have their doubts about ChemiClean. This treats 300 gallons. A lot of people say, hey, it can do bad things, but you've got to follow the instructions completely. First of all, directions say oxygen levels must be increased because the ChemiClean uses the oxygen in the water. If the, water in the, if the oxygen in the water is used up, well the fish aren't going to live. So what I've done is I'm going to run an airline tubing through my tank and plug it into the power source back here. And I'll take the plug always great to get a power strip like this that has 10 outlets for a reef tank. But remember, just because you have 10 outlets does not mean you can plug up a, a lot of wattage to it. you got to make sure your circuit can take it. So you guys can see that the airline is on and I'm only using one of the outlets. This is a dual outlet air pump and I've got an air stone from Walmart. Actually this air pump came from Walmart. So the air stone. And you can see the fish are pretty hungry. They want some food. I'm going to plug this into it. Slip it over here and let that air stone sit in my tank. And this is only half the power of the air pump itself. Now, it looks ugly, it does, but I'm gonna keep this thing going because the, the Chemi Pure Elite uses a lot of, excuse me, I'm sorry, the Chemi Clean uses a tremendous a lot of oxygen in your tank. So you wanna make sure you have more oxygen than the Chemi Clean can take care of. I've also noticed something else with the, uh, decrease in nitrates. The macroalgae are dying off because they don't have a food source. Turn your UV lights off. I don't have one yet. Ozoner. I don't believe you need one. Uh, don't get me started on those. And remove chemipure or carbon during treatment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my power source off. And the lights are on a different power source. And what I'm going to do is go down to the sump. I'm going to let this drain. This is a little DIY pre-filter I've made. And what I'm gonna do is remove the intake to the pre-filter. Slowly raise the drawers up to drain the water. The first chamber is an emergency drawer. There's a little pod right there. I'm gonna throw him. Actually, that's a bug, my bad. Not a pod. What I'm going to do now, and today is supposed to be my day of water change, but you want, you want to do a water change after you uh, remove your chemi clean. So what I'm not, I'm not going to do a water change until 48 hours is up. I'm going to throw this old nasty filter media in the trash behind me. Take my DIY filter media, pillow fabric, replace it. and put that back into the DIY filter. The next thing I'm gonna do is take out my chemical media. Phosgard's in here, regular carbon's in here. I'm gonna take them out. And I'll put them back in later. Now, I'll reassemble the filter and the sump. Let the water fill it back up slowly. I'm not going to force it ways down. And if you guys are asking, does this thing work? It does. If you guys want to see a video on how I made it, I'll be glad to. Let me know. All right. I'm going to reassemble the intake. Close the door. Then I'm going to come back over here and hit the power source. And the tank's going to refill itself. The next thing it says on the directions, you can continue to use your protein skimmer, but you might have to readjust because your protein skimmer might go crazy. Maintain normal water flow, so I'm gonna keep all my power heads and my pumps on in the tank. And here we go. I'm gonna got a bucket down here, and I'm gonna follow directions carefully. The directions say for every scoop 
of your little measuring cup it provides you with, you're supposed to mix it with one cup of water. Well, this is a roughly with the sump around 80, 90 gallons per water. So I'm gonna go a little overkill. Just take this little container and take a couple cups out of here. That should be enough. Because this container is way over a cup. The next thing I'm going to do is remove it from the package. Here's a little measuring cup, and you can see it goes a long ways. Well, oh, they don't want you to steal this thing. Ah, screw it up with the box. Okay. It's got a safety lid on it. Let's see if I can do it. Alright. There we go. So, I have 55 gallon plus 29 gallon. It's about 85 gallons. So, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, and a half. And I'm supposed to use this one little cup for every 10 gallons. So this treats 300 gallons. I've got more left over for the future. Hopefully I won't need it, but I might. Then I'll stir this up. I'm not going to have it perfect. I'm just going to stir this up and just let me double read the directions real quick. Uh, pour solution back into the aquarium and it should be successfully treated in 48 hours and do a 20% water change. So, it's going back into the tank. Note this is water from the tank. Pour that in slowly. in there. There we go. Now as you guys can see this tank is loaded with cyanobacteria and it's not because I have nitrates or phosphate in my tank. I actually have zero nitrates and zero phosphates in this tank right now. It's just that I can't shake it so I've got to use the ChemiClean and ChemiPure and it's, it's going to take care of it. Um, ChemiClean has phos uh, GFO in it which removes phosphate and it also has nitrate removing media in there. And you can see cyanos just regrowing the glass and just scraped it the other day. But uh, a lot of people are saying, why don't you run a FOSS, FOSS band reactor? It's a strong possibility that I will be running a FOSS band reactor very shortly, or a phosphate media reactor. Um, I'm going to come back at you guys in 48 hours. We're going to see what happens. In 48 hours, I'll do my weekly water change of this tank. And then I'll take the can clean. Kemi Pure Elite. I've got two of these. Two of these this size um, can fit a hundred gallon tank. One of these will fit a five to forty gallon tank. Two of these will be a forty to hundred gallon tank. And every hundred, once you get past hundred gallons, you want to add an extra unit for every twenty-five gallons. So if you got hundred twenty-five, you need three. If you got hundred and fifty, you need four. If you got hundred and seventy-five, you need five. If you got two hundred, you need six. Our price is going to go up, but this is really good stuff. This also removes CO2. Uh, I'll get into this more when we talk about the Kemi Pure Elite and what's the difference from Kemi Pure Elite and Kemi Pure. And I'll come back at you guys in 48 hours and we'll see what this tank is looking like. Alright guys, what I'm going to do now to break up that cyanobacteria that's left over because it's dying in my tank right now, it's barely holding on, is something I actually learned from the plant guy, Dustin's Fish Tanks. And that's taking a turkey baster to your rocks. And he actually, I believe, learned this from someone else. I don't know if it was Brian, Steve, or whoever it was. I think it was he learned it from one of his buddies. But uh, what I'm going to do is um, take the turkey baster, fill it up, and just blast the rocks. What this is going to do, and yes, I'm actually quoting Dustin's words, is 
it's going to release all that detritus that's built up in the rocks and let it get filtered out. And you can already see whoops, that the cyanobacteria is coming off the rocks. I think I just did a little too hard on that one. But you get the point. You can see already that it's kicking up a lot of debris, including the cyanobacteria. What I'm going to do is just base the crap out of this rock and let it kick up all that cyanobacteria, let it get caught in my mechanical filtration, and that's going to help keep the cyanobacteria under wraps. transition to the other side. Now all this debris that's caught on your live rock can now get siphoned out. I mean not siphoned, filtered out, I'm sorry. Alright, I'll come back at you guys in a few minutes. Okay guys, it's been a few minutes and you can still see there's stuff floating around in the water column. But the tank has definitely cleared up. There's no doubt about it. Compared to how much cyanobacteria that was in this tank, it, there's, there's none compared to what was actually in this tank. You can still see there's small fragments of cyanobacteria and it's going to die off. You can actually start to see this, uh, the coralline algae that was underneath the cyanobacteria that is now visible. Overall, I think the ChemiClean Elite and the ChemiPure did its job. And if you guys don't believe me, here's the final look of before and after the ChemiClean and ChemiPure Elite on this tank. Stay tuned to the next video, guys. If you have any questions, I know this was a long one, and I thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below or hit me with the message. You guys know I'll get back to you guys. If you guys need a subscription, let me know. Comment, rate, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Later.